right at the top. Check this out. Not too shabby, right? Let's talk about it. What is happening, y'all? Liam here, and this is the Insta360 Link AI-powered 4K webcam. Now, I think the best way to do things today is let's just jump into the software. I'll kind of do like a user experience tour feature overview, and in that, share the things that I think they did really well, touch on the things that I'd love to see improvements on, and then at the end, share three use cases where if you do tech content or streaming, that this specific webcam is still an asset. For full disclosure, Insta360 did send me the link for review. They did not pay me for any kind of content. They asked me to touch on some recent firmware updates, but otherwise have no editorial control, and they're not seeing this before you. And welcome to the Insta360 Link Controller software. Now, just for some context of what you're actually looking at here, this view is a 1440p screen recording from OBS of my monitor, so you can see the webcam, you can see all the UI controls. This angle, whenever we switch to it, is a full 4K recording from the link done from the software. And this angle is my EOS R 1080p, just so as we bounce around, you know what you're looking at. I think the first thing to address is that this is a good looking webcam. We are in 4K. I'm under some nice looking lighting. Compared to my EOS R, it's got a good amount of dynamic range. It's sharp, but not like overly processed. Insta360 done did some work. But now jumping to the software itself, over here on the right, let's start here. We are in the gimbal control panel of the software. The three axis gimbal of the Insta360 is like the biggest feature point, and it's not even kind of a gimmick. It's amazing. Moving around the joystick right here, it actually moves around the camera. This isn't like digital punching in. The gimbal is actually moving, and I can also just grab the screen here in the middle and move it around. This is actually much easier. And then these positions down here, one, two, three, and four, which you can make up to six, I can set as position hotkeys. So looking at me, a nice A roll, let's make position one. Let's go down here to the keyboard. That's gonna be position two. I wanna see what's going on over here on my other monitor. That's gonna be position three. The door, because you never know, that's gonna be position four. We can also zoom in, then lock in the position. And then with these positions set, you can alt one, alt two, alt three, alt four, alt back to one, it just jumps around and you've got a bunch of preset angles that you can really quickly jump to completely hands off from the webcam itself. I am a really big fan of how fast it is. It's really cool to just like play with. NVIDIA overlay, what are you doing? But now let's go to the image settings panel. On this panel here is where you can set all your camera settings, your exposures, your tone curve, your white balance, saturation and sharpness. It's all right here. It's fantastically featured, but it's pretty uh, buggy. ISO, fantastic. Shutter speed, fantastic. But the exposure tone curve here, you'll notice is just completely flat. If I just click dead center in the middle, it adds a lot of contrast, except this on the tone curve should be adding pretty much nothing. Let's just reset this back. This looks a little bit better. Down here on white balance, you can warm up your image. You can cool it off. One thing here, I'd love to see a tint slider. Brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness. This place is another place of a bit of confusion. Looking at the preview right here, I like what that looks like, but if we go to this image, this is the AVI recording from the link, from the link software. And you'll notice it kind of has that like faded film look. I'm 90% sure I've heard something with like AVI footage and Adobe Premiere, which is what I edit in. If I watch back this clip in like VLC, it looks fine. Dropping it into Premiere, it has that like faded film look. You can absolutely test things like test your settings, test the footage in Premiere, but it would definitely be nice if the video format out of the link software was just like MP4 or something. It's just one extra step and the whole idea around a webcam being low hassle, that's something that I would love to see improvement on. Now, this is one of the places of the software where the latest firmware actually helps a bunch. Before the update to version 1.3.1.8, build seven, if you close the software and then reopened it, everything would be reset, at least partially. So if you looked at the webcam preview, your image would be correct in how you set it previously. But if you looked at the settings, it would be like ISO 6400, shutter speed one over 10. Luckily, all that's fixed in the latest firmware. You can close the software, reopen it. Your settings and the image are what you left them like. I think that made sense. All right, let's move on to more settings. Right here at the top, you get gesture settings. Now that is where the AI powered webcam comes in. Let's toggle all these on so we can demonstrate it. If I do this, this, for example, the light will blink and you can see that it actually tracks with my head. And the whole idea here is like you can hands-free, turn it on, have it track you, and then hands-free, turn it off. I just had a minor scare. I thought Premiere stopped recording audio. Down here, this is zoom. So now this one, if I do a little bit of an L here and I go down, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm already fully zoomed out. Let's go, oh wait, there we go. If I go down, if I go down. Oh wait, is it this arm? There we go. This one's a little bit trickier. The hand gestures are a little tough for sure. Now, right below that is whiteboard mode. This is really cool. Now, what whiteboard mode does is with the link, you get these little like edge corner stickers. Let's try this for a demonstration. Top of the monitor, bottom of the monitor. 
Ow. So now, for example, if I'm doing something and I want to be like, oh, hey, check out, look at the monitor, everybody. There's something really interesting on it. Live, real time, no cutting. Boom. We snap in. And now the webcam, it's like 10 feet away. So the resolution is dropping, but you can see it snaps in. And if I do a peace sign, peace sign, we snap back out and we're back here. Really cool use case for that at the end. Stay tuned. Alt one back to normal. You have autofocus. You also have manual focus. Now, obviously I'm out of focus. I'm making a point here. One of the things I like about webcams is that the minimum focus distance is so close that you can almost use it like a macro lens. Now, I think this is a good time to bring up some hardware elements. It is a half inch sensor and it advertises an F 1.8 lens. But with all webcams, there's almost no optical bokeh, at least when I'm sitting, you know, what to an arm's length away, you can see a little bit of out of focusness in the background. I'm obviously sharp, but an F 1.8 lens on something like my camera, for example, would be very heavily out of focus in the background. I can get really close to the camera. And at that point, you definitely see some really good bokeh in the background. But if you're familiar with camera lenses and then you see the F 1.8 lens of the link, it's not like the same back to the software. Now, streamer mode is actually really cool. If I toggle it on now, everything looks the same after it resets in the software. But what you get, if you go here to resolution 1080 by 1920, if I toggle that on now, you can see we're in a portrait orientation, but it's not a digital crop and reframing the gimbal has flipped 90 degrees. Now, this is obviously fantastic for like TikToks, Instagram reels, shorts. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram, by the way, and Twitter. You're obviously on my YouTube. Thanks. Streamer mode is super cool. I like it. Hold up. Wait a minute. We are back to horizontal 4K. Check out the settings here. Shutter speed one over 8000. This would be a very dark image if that shutter speed was actually being used. If I hit the plus, we can see now we're up to one over 6400. The preview settings have been kicked in. So it does look like despite the firmware update, closing and reopening the software, the image looks good. Settings stay the same, but going in and out of streamer mode does seem to still kick the settings around. Now, even though that was a lot of settings, way more than any other webcam that I've ever looked at, it keeps going here at the bottom bar. Let's go through it really quick here. You can turn on and off your preview a la like so we can change our resolution 4k 1080p 720 1080 by 1920 or 720 by 1280 on streamer mode. And then these here at the bottom are some of the like feature activation assistive buttons. The first one is tracking. So if I am near the computer, I can turn it on and it'll start tracking my head next to it is a physical button for the whiteboard mode. So you don't have to use the gesture overhead mode, which if I click it, you can see looks completely terrible. However, we can see the camera right there. If you have your camera kind of mounted 90 degrees forward at all times, you can see you still have your a roll angle looking straight at you. If I toggle on overhead mode, it'll flip the angle to look straight down. And now we have an overhead shot. Now, the last one here is desk view, which is kind of like overhead V2. What this mode does is it looks down at your desk at what ends up being like a 45 degree angle and then skews the image to make it look like it's a straight on top down angle. You can see here, this is what we're looking at. And you can already tell it looks kind of weird. We have the microphone stand that's a little bit distorted. If I pull the box of the link in this doesn't look half bad. However, this part of the box right here is not like a panel that's flipping out. This is just the top of the box that's distorted because it's, you know, kind of faking the top down look. So now that you've seen what the webcam can do, here's three use cases that you can apply those features to. The first thing I guess encompasses a few things. It's a fantastic either B angle to go with your stream or tech content. Full 4K matches with other footage. It definitely looks like a webcam. This angle obviously looks pretty stark, noticeable difference to this angle, but with some color correction, it could definitely match match well enough to be like a dedicated top down angle. If you do a lot of that with your content, number two, the whiteboard mode, here's something really cool because whiteboard mode just looks for the four corners, wherever they are in frame, you could put them on the side of something like a PC case. If you're doing a build stream and number three, every good stream has a pet cam, make one of the gimbal presets to point at the bed. That's super cool. Whiteboard mode. I'm not trying to do anything. So yeah, that's the Insta360 link. So much going on. I think a lot of it is also really good. I like this thing. No, it's not perfect. No product is. I would love it to be a wider field of view. That is one thing. But now that you've seen a lot of what it can do, how does the $300 price point stack up against that? I honestly think that's going to be the hardest selling point of this camera for a certain audience. The link is heavily marketed towards like presentation and office use. It just so happens to have great utility in the tech and streaming space, but also so in the tech and streaming space, people are doing a lot of sitting down. Utility is great, but people love their pure quality. And if you've saved $300 already, that is a good amount towards something that is a lot nicer as far as pure quality. If you need a webcam specifically or the utility the link offers, I think it's great. But let me know if you had $300 to spend on more visual accompaniment to your content, what would you be looking at? Thank you to Insta360 for sending me the link for review. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, like it, sub if you think you'll like more, stay safe, stay happy. And I'll catch you back here for some sim racing content very soon. Peace!